Hi there, my name is Chris Betcher. I'm a Google Certified Teacher and I'm here to show you a demo slam with Google Earth. So we hear a little bit about climate change and how the potential of climate change, global warming, that sea level could in fact rise. I want to simulate that in Google Earth to see what effect that would actually have on the people that live near the water. So this is Sydney, this is my hometown. We have lots of people living near the water here in Sydney. You can see there's a harbour that runs all the way up here and there's hundreds of thousands of people that live on the foreshore of the harbour. So let's just take a little close up view here. You can see as, I, as you go in there, there's lots of little bays and inlets as we go up the river here. Um, and you can see all the houses along the foreshore. So what would happen if the water actually rose? Well, one thing you need to know about Google Maps is, or Google Earth, is that although it looks like a flat map, it does in fact have landform data. So the, the heights of the land above the sea level is actually embedded in the map. I can show you that by turning the map on its side here. And although it's fairly subtle, if I was to just rotate that around like that, and hopefully you can see there that there is some subtle difference in the land above the water. You can see it there in the background. Okay, so we know that the land actually does have some data. Now I don't think it's 100% accurate, it's probably some variation in error. Um, we've also got tides that go up and down. So there's, you know, we're talking a couple of meters of variance here as a margin of error. But there's a button up the top here that lets you draw a thing called a polygon. Like a polygon's just a shape. So I'm going to click that button and draw a shape. So I'm going to click once, twice, three, four, and then back to the beginning again, okay? And effectively, what I've just drawn is a rectangular shape that sits on the land. Now that, in fact, that shape, think of it like a blanket that I've just tossed over the ground, it's actually following the contours of the ground. I don't want it to do that, I actually want that shape to sit flat at sea level. So I can go to the properties here for that polygon, go to the altitude tab, and instead of clamped to ground, which is what's making it follow the, the contours of the ground at the moment, I can change this to absolute. And you can see when I change it to absolute, it kind of vanishes. What it's just done is it's dropped to sea level. The reason you can't see it, I think, is that the fact that um, because of the difference in tides and the accuracy of the map, it's actually just probably sitting just on or slightly below uh, the measured sea level on the map. But if I was to take this slider and pull this slider up, you can see that that polygon starts to rise and fall as I slide back and forward. So what I'm in effect doing there is simulating the rise of the water. Now you can see even at five meters here, it's not quite covering everything, but that could just be margin of error in tidal uh, range or the accuracy of the map. So let's just sort of put a value in there, like say 10 meters. And you can see that even at 10 meters, you can start to see some of the properties on the edge of the water here are being inundated. What would happen if we went to something a little bit higher? Let's go to uh, the information again for that polygon, the altitude tab. Let's change it to say 20 meters. And you can see at 20 meters, we actually start to see some serious inundation of the water on the land. So there's a little tool you can use by drawing a polygon on top of Google Earth and then simply, uh, let me just go and show you that one more time, in the altitude tab of the properties for that polygon, make sure it's set to absolute and then this slider lets you move that up and down and you can simulate the effect of water going up and down. Slam!